Okay, uh, hello everyone. Today we have Ingo Runke here in Hamburg. He's telling us about uh, surface defects and the topological quantum field theories. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, I was actually also here as a postdoc a long time ago in 2004 or 2005, if I remember correctly. Right. It's still the same, but everything else has changed very much and grown, so that is good to see. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, I uh, today want to tell you about um, joint work with Niels uh, Kahl and uh, Gregor Schaumann, and the topic is uh, surface defects and 3D TPFT, so topological quantum field series. And I want to look at um, not the um, usual observables, uh, which would be Wilson line um, operators, but um, surface defects. So this we will get to in the very end. First, um, I want to, so I uh, look at this from a more mathematical perspective. So I want to set up, um, or I explain a bit um, the setting in which I will work. Um, and then um, I will state some observations one can make in that set. So I want to start uh, by saying what do I mean when I say topological quantum field theory? So how to describe I, uh, um, and one can maybe distinguish two main ways of doing this. One is the uh, more physical approach of um, writing down an action and then uh, trying to uh, quantize. So the um, maybe best known um, instance of this, so I have an action. Uh, the best known instance of this is uh, three dimensional Chern Simon theory. So, for example, we could consider Simon. So, there, what you do is you take a compact uh, gauge group. Um, so, for example, to be a uh, very simple item, we would just take SN. And um, then uh, you are, uh, so you look at a three manifold and your variable, um, your quantum field on the three manifold is a connection one form with values in the Lie algebra group, I uh, call the Lie algebra on G. So a G valued uh, connection one form. Uh, on some three manifold M. So that's your field. And then um, the action you would consider uh, would look something like this. Uh, so that would be some uh, constant and then uh, an integral over the three manifold. And um, what you want to integrate over the three manifold. So you don't want to use a metric. So that's uh, the whole point. You want a theory where you can write down the action. Uh, without using the metric on M. So you'd have to come up with some way of producing a three form to integrate and put one form. So uh, what you can do is you write a trace over A dash to A. Uh, and there is another term you could write down, which is A dash A to A. And uh, because G is not uh, necessarily a million, that doesn't need to be zero. And then if you combine these two terms with uh, the correct ratio, it um, turns out that this expression is actually gauge invariant. Or um, that is not quite true. If you um, do a um, global gauge transformation on M, then um, this action is not quite gauge invariant, but it uh, can uh, change by discrete amounts. But you can use this in a, a past integral where you would look at the exponentiated action, <coughs> and you would say, I am looking at a past integral for my three manifold M, where I integrate over, um, say, these uh, connection one forms, and I do this e to the two pi i. Then I put a constant k, s of a, and then s of a, this constant here, is chosen such that this term um, can only change by integers if I do a gauge transformation, so then it's this k here is also in that 
then this uh, with the gauge invariant um, so I just wanted to state this as uh, maybe a more familiar example. I don't do anything with this um, action formulation, but that is one way uh, to look at uh, topological quantum fields. So now you would, so that's of course, uh, you, know, you have to find some way of quantizing this to make sense of this expression and so on. So you could try. Can I, can I ask a very naive question? If I make now a uh, rotation to uh, GP, Mm -hmm. I get instead of two pi i minus two pi. Yeah. I mean that uh, the series doesn't make sense in that case. So. Yeah, I think that's what I mean. Uh, so, so that's that theory, which I'm considering here to be a gauge theory. I really want k to be an integer. So, but still, you need your signature there. Uh, but still, so this, um, so m doesn't have a metric, right? So. And talk about signature. I'm just integrating this three form. Ah, so it doesn't depend on the signature. No matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, but okay, that's the last thing. Well, okay, I talk about action as a motivator, uh, 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 but but this specific action I will no longer appeal to. Instead, um, I will now want to introduce the quantum theory of pick, which is to describe T Q T by uh, axioms. Um, and um, so there is a mathematical uh, way of looking at TQT, which was uh, first introduced by Atia and by Siegel. And um, one can just write down a definition, which I will do with lots of words. And um, then if you see these two next to each other for the first time, it's kind of surprising why they should have anything to do with each other. And I will want to explain the ingredients of that definition. Later. So a definition, an n-dimensional, so this is in three dimensions. This definition you can just write down in dimension. Nobody is stopping you. Is a symmetric model phantom. Uh, symmetric model phantom set from some geometric category of n-dimensional borderisms into some more algebraic category, namely that of vector space. So yeah, that's my definition of a TQT, not mine, what I want to use. And so I claim that that indeed has something to do with this, and I want to explain this a little bit. So, um, and I don't, I will not need or explain the technical meaning of all these terms, um, but I will um, say this what, how, what, how some of these link to properties of time. So, um, uh, firstly, here I just want to do n is three. So, uh, this little n, the n dimension is equivalent to three dimensions. Um, so, in three dimensions, um, from the uh, from the passing to an intuition, we would think that if I take a two dimensional surface, then um, there should be some space of states associated to the surface, which Sort of describe the fields and the values of the field, the base space of the field, respective to that surface. So uh, we expect a surface, to each uh, two dimensional surface, we should be able to uh, assign some state space H sigma, right? So in a three dimensional series, state spaces should be with respect to co dimension one uh, object. So here, surface. So where, uh, where does this abstract formulation capture this point? So uh, I need to say a little bit the word category. So in a category of what objects and morphisms, maps between these objects. And in this category, the objects are surfaces. And so um, morphisms between them will be uh, three manifolds, but the objects are uh, surfaces. Objects of uh, board. Three or n three are um, are two manifolds surfaces. So without boundary. So these have uh, these have empty. Uh, they should think of them as themselves as being boundaries. Yes. 
über so Zonen, wie bauen wir das auch jeder Mensch macht? What about the bundles of all this? So, so you could now think in this John Simon examples, how would I more precisely describe the states geometrically? And I don't want to do this. Um, so yes, then you would have to do what you say. Um, so maybe you would like you know certain space of that connections on your angles on your surface. But I just want to use this intuition surface voice to vector space and I want to say that that is precisely what this intuition is that, but I don't want to make it precise. Should these surfaces be space-like or it's not important? Uh, so there's no metric so that I, I'm allowed to ignore that question because there's no space space in this time. So but if you want to use this one of your intuition then there would be a space-like slide and you have like a time evolution which propagates well, space. Um, but the the final theory shouldn't depend on the metric at all, so it shouldn't matter what you call space. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so these are too many folks. There are some more uh, technical things. They are also compact and, and this uh, formalism oriented. Um, and closed, closed, they already said they don't have boundary themselves. And um, and then what a functor does, it takes an object here and assigns to it an object here. The objects here are vector spaces. So I can just define, I would just define the state space assigned to sigma. I just define to be what the functor says to a surface. And so that is how this uh, thing you want from your path interval comes out of that definition. Uh, so this is the vector space. Okay. Sorry, and the arrows in the category are just three dimensional manifolds of. Uh, uh, yeah, so we get to the arrows, they are three dimensional manifolds with boundary. Um, so before we get there, I want to put it aside to say that um, actually this definition is also quite restrictive in a certain sense. So you can, in this, in this setting, we can prove the dilemma, which is that um, draw sigma. Uh, the vector space that of sigma is finite okay. so that's a, that's a fact in the setting. If your favorite TPFT does not have this property, it will not fit in the frame. Um, good. So, so I want to talk more about these words. Uh, so here is maybe an, another thing one would wish for in the uh, past integral, in the past integral point of view. If I have a three manifold M and um, the boundary of M is this uh, two manifold sigma here, then uh, then I want to think of states applied to the surface as boundary conditions for the field over to this one M. So I want to say that the pass interval, um, pass interval of that of M, um, uh, it should somehow produce a functional on the state space. Each state is a boundary condition. If I carry out the pass, it produces a number, and that should be what the function says to that state. So how does this um, appear over here? Total morphisms. Um, the maps and quotation marks in board N, Morphisms, the arrows, the metric carry, uh, in board C, are uh, three manifolds uh, with a boundary, so there's one empty boundary. So if I draw an arrow between two surfaces, sigma and sigma prime, and label it by M, that means I have a three manifold M such that um, the boundary of M. Is uh, and what was my conventions of the sigma is the disjoint union of these two surfaces, and I have to reverse the orientation of one of them, but we can ignore the spectral one. So, so an arrow between two surfaces is a three manifold whose boundary is compartmented into two parts, and one I call the ingoing and one the outgoing part. So, this most stupid example is if you take a surface times an interval, then 
the boundary of that resulting three manifold has the two disjoint boundaries and would be the identity morphism from sigma. Uh, okay, so that's a morphism. So okay, we want to get to this. So here's another information that for so uh, in one of the allowed objects in here is the empty set. That may be a bit strange, but I'm going to use it anyway. So if my surface is an empty set, then what the functor set to the empty set is it just says complex numbers. And um, and this fact, uh, that's the consequence of the word monoidal here, um, which I will not go into details of. Um, but okay, so for an empty set, I just get the complex numbers. I want to get here, so let's see. Um, so, um, uh, so if I take this situation here, then I would say if I have some uh, some manifold M, which goes from sigma into the empty set, and uh, I apply the functor to this ordism, well, what will it be? It has to be something which starts in set of sigma, and then is a functor maps arrows to arrows, so three-dimensional manifolds with boundary to a linear map, and it'll map it to a linear map from H of sigma, which we define to be the state space, to uh, the set of empty set, which is C. Um, so, so it produces this intuition uh, out of um, out of the abstract image. Mm -hmm. And I want to do maybe a final, uh, a final property one expects from the past integral point of view, which is the sum over intermediate states, uh, and say how that comes out of this. So this property here, that uh, Z uh, applied to this board so with a linear map from here to here, um, that's one consequence of the word function. Okay, so here is maybe another intuition one has from past integrals. So suppose I look at a closed three manifolds, M, which uh, doesn't have a bound, so I draw it like this. Uh, then the past interval would be a number, it should be some um, topological invariant of my three manifold. But I should be allowed to uh, cut my three manifold along the co dimension two surfaces. And then I should use, be allowed to do a sum over intermediate states and get the same result. And I will write this um, more and more. Co dimension two. Or co -dimension no, co dimension one. Did I say co dimension two? I meant high dimension two or co dimension The co dimension one um, is cut into two parts. And um, I want to be able, uh, so this is, as you can find it in um, Witten's uh, paper on the uh, Jones polynomial. Uh, you would say that, okay, um, I should be able to think of a set of one half of this, we call this one half M1, uh, and there'll be some boundary surface sigma. And um, I want to think of the uh, pass interval here producing a state in H uh, sigma. And then maybe um, I want to pair this with, uh, let's go to the, the other half, let's call it M2, the boundary is the same, so that should be placed by a cut. And I want to think of uh, this as a functional of H sigma, and I pair them by evaluating uh, this on this. And that's also a number, and I want this number to be the same as uh, this number. Okay, so, um, and so from the past integral point of view, this should be thought of as a sum over intermediate state, but I put all the possible boundary conditions here and evaluate both sides separately as a sum, and I should recover the original amp. Can I just ask you a question? I mean, can you talk about the path into a well, that I'm talking in a lot of days if look at the past definition? Yes, but I, I also know that in quantum field theory, these path integrals are not defined field preservation. I mean, they're only, you know, constructive field theory that does this maybe in two dimensions, but not for this kind of fact. I mean, you sort of try to operate or pretend mm -hmm. that you know that these things exist, 
or um, so I, and you're not bothered by the fact that no one can actually calculate yeah. um so very good point um so sort of the um so uh, mm -hmm. the approach i was trying to follow here is um uh, so, so i will use this definition and I wanted to relate this definition to some intuition which one would expect from a path into the picture. So, so when I say this, I say this is something one might expect if one could make sense of a path integral. But this property is a fact if you if you have something which very verifies this definition. Yeah, but this is a little bit like you know I can this I have this abstract definition just by formulating the Whiteman axiom yeah. from the field theory. And now I proceed to prove things, mm -hmm. but I always keep in mind that somehow in Fordham, at least there's no not a single logic or example that satisfies the five minutes uh, accident. Right. So um, you know it could end up to be an empty theory in some sense. It could be. So good. So I'm so what I'm not trying to do is to to prove or make precise the notion of the past integral or prove existence. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so what I'm trying to do is say why might one want to look at this? It captures certain properties one might uh, pass, one might expect a person to have, and then one investigates this object. This object in three dimensions does have examples, um, and so we are not talking about the empty set. But uh, the reason why we have examples is the key element of everything, right? So the topological quantum field theory. That's why we can use it precisely. Um, if you uh, drop this, uh, so we also enter the set of empty examples. Very quickly. At least for change samples, you can go beyond the prediction theory. So was before. No, no, I, I appreciate that as long as you stay topological, you have some some chance of somehow reducing or understanding this in terms of finite dimensional. Like you call it something that in true quantum field theory, you have to stay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I have nothing to add to the general on the theory question. Well, I have a obvious question. Uh, then you need the norm, right? In this thing that you talk about. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. but look how yeah. cleverly cheated by putting a star here. Yeah, but uh, in the in the in the definition, you have a vector space, right? But it's not happening. Right, so my dual vector space. Okay. So, so it's just, it's just the dual. When once you have the dual, you always can. Well, yeah. so far no example is given, but like there will be examples. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 I'm going to claim this. Well, when, when when they are writing uh, invariants of norms, they give some description. Well. Right. Um. But um. So I will I will say so the following thing is an example. And not to tell you any details of that. But why is it called absent? Uh, well, um, as of why is it called well, mm, this definition is my axiom for what I this is my axiomatic definition of the TQFT because I, I just decree not axion axiom. Mm, mm. Yeah, axion. No, that's new. They the axion which are written in Yes. So, so that's maybe a desirable property. So I want to briefly say how that comes out of the definition. Mm. So, so what is the situation we have here? We have uh, two halves of our big manifold M. Uh, one half goes, uh, have, so they both have boundary sigma, but we think, think of this boundary once as the outgoing and once of the ingoing boundary of my uh, three manifold, just dwarfism. So I can write these two arrows. And the composition in board three is gluing. So, so the composition. Uh, uh, M2 composed with M1 um, is just the blue along sigma, and so then you get you get this M. So that's um, how this looks like in board three. And now uh, I apply the functor Z to this. So uh, like that. So then I get something which goes from Z of empty set 
to Z of sigma to Z of empty set. So here we have C H sigma C. And here I have Z of M1 and Z of M2. And uh, now another uh, property of a functor is that the two composition operations in your two categories are compatible. So first composing here and then applying Z is the same as first applying Z and then composing the linear map. So this is just equal to evaluating Z of uh, M2 composed with M1, which, which, which is Z of M. Right, so this is how, how the factorial definition reproduces this um, sum over intermediate states problem. Uh, so, and then, uh, so, so these are some examples of properties one by one in the future field, how they come out uh, in a parsimonial approach and how they come out of the definition. What about symmetric? What about symmetric? Yeah, somehow. Uh, there is always one person who asks this. Um, so, so the symmetric is uh, uh, is one of these things which make mathematicians happy and annoy physicists. Um, so, so if I um, look at the disjoint unions of two objects, two surfaces, this is isomorphic but not equal to taking the disjoint union in the other order. So there's an isomorphism here, not by density. Similarly, if I take the tensor product of two vector spaces, which is isomorphic but not equal to taking the tensor product in the other order. And uh, symmetric means that this specific isomorphism has to be mapped to this specific isomorphism. Uh, and yeah, that's a property you need for abstract reasons, but uh, one shouldn't talk to, about it for too long. So you mean it's sometimes it's not the first realization of it? No, it's super easy. This is just the cylinder where you identify the ends in the other order. And this is uh, take the element u tensor. So and understand method. what means equal beyond isomorphism from a mathematical point of view. But equal is equal to the same element in the set. Well, I think the mean, 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 mean by equal mean that you have a one-to-one map. Well, well, yes. <laughs> So my definition of equal is they're the same and not the same. Mm. Yeah, so as I say, now we could annoy each other by words, but uh, <laughs> yeah. that's what it means. Um, uh, okay, so anyways, this is all I wanted to say about why this may or may not be a sensible definition. Um, so what is a class of examples? Uh, a class of examples is called a Shapikin IF And um, uh, they are a little bit uh, tedious to define in detail, but the upshot is that one can start from a finite amount of algebraic data. Uh, so, in the most complete sense of the finite collection of numbers subject to certain conditions, uh, which together are something called the modular tensor category. We will not descend into the details of what this means, but um, uh, I want to stress that this object can be fixed by giving a finite amount of data. And um, to this, this construction by Rishitikin and to Ayev, Assigns uh, 3D T plus T. Uh, let's call it so this modular tensor category we call it C. Uh, assigns such a function. Let's call it Z. And um, then the computations are also um, algorithmic. If you hand me a three manifold, um, uh, then I should be able to uh, compute its invariant from this data. Um, okay, so for example, so what's the source of these C's? So okay, one example is if C is the category of um, integral highest weight representations of some affine E algebra, for example, uh, SU2 at level K. And if you look at the uh, recipe and for IF theory for this specific collection of data, you should obtain uh, the Simon theory 
for SU2 at level three. And I say should obtain because to make this a theorem, you need a full non perturbative definition of this, which doesn't. Uh, so we can take this theory, which exists in the sense of satisfying the definition I wrote, as a replacement for that performance. Uh, well, yeah, so if you hand me a specific thing to compute and you let me go away for an amount of time, I will tell you what I will come here. <coughs> So I can say how these computations work in principle. So, um, so if I am tasked with computing a three-manifold invariant in this setting, in this setting, um, I need to compute. I need to first know sort of the six J symbols in the R matrices of this category, and then I need a surgery representation of the three-manifold that relay relates the three-manifold to a S three with a link inside, and then I will compute the link invariant of that link in, in this setting. That's uh, right. That's what I wanted to say about CD, TQFT, and the uh, point of view I take towards it. Next, I want to talk about locals. Cool. Uh, so, yes. mm. so, we will now go through observables by dimension. Then we will start with. So observables which are localized at a point. So these will be your state of observables in quantum field theory, but in a TFT they are very important. And 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 a TFT is sort of non-degenerate in a certain sense, and they are just the only the, the only observable you can have at the point is the identity. And this is a related to that statement that there are no interesting point observables. This is related to the fact that the vector space to the TFT assigns to a two sphere uh, is also one dimension. So this property is true for all of these which and drive series. Uh, and uh, so they have no interesting point observables. And in any case, that may be something you would expect from a three from a topological theory is that there is. No information at the point. So we go on to the next dimension, which are line of circles. So line of circles are was very interesting. These in terms of Simon's theory, um, uh, is the, uh, or an example of such observables would be Wilson line of circles. So what do you do there? Uh, you draw some a uh, loop in your three manifold. Um, you label it by some representation B of your gauge group. And then to, to write uh, this down, you, you pick an arbitrary point on your loop and say that's the starting point. And then you write a pass order exponential of the integral uh, along the loop, starting and ending at that point of your connection one form with some line element for the loop. Uh, but then um, we want it to be independent of the point where you started. So this is now a group element. You take its uh, representing matrix and that representation B, and then you trace. Okay? And so this, this is a Wilson line operator whose expectation value you could try and compute, and that's how uh, in Witten's paper, you arrive at the link invariant, which is in John's phenomenon, if you look at this part of the graph. So, how would you treat these axiomatically? Uh, so, axiomatically, you do this by uh, basically just making the definition more complicated and hoping someone will come along and write down examples of your definition. Uh, So, axiomatic treatment. 
Um, uh, so again, so what we do is we make our borders and category more complicated. So we decree that our borders are not only surfaces of sigma, but the surfaces can have marked points. Um, and uh, and then the border zone, the three manifold which goes between them, uh, you are allowed to embed uh, lines uh, like this. Mm, and these would be labeled, uh, uh, would, would carry some labels, which, which uh, label a different possible line operators. So in this transcendent example, they are labeled by representations. Um, and in uh, this recipe to I of TQ of T, these line uh, observables are labeled by, um, by objects uh, in, the, in this modular tensor particular we started. Right, so for example, how did I erase my example? No, my example down here, um, you would label these lines by uh, representations of this affine the algebra. Right, but as a, sorry, what? Right, so, um, so this is in the way in which this axiomatic definition just doesn't tell you very much. It just instructs you to make to make the category more complicated, but um, it doesn't help you to actually write down uh, write down an example. It just says that now you have some set of colors which you assign to these lines, and you have these lines, um, but it doesn't help you to write down the actual function. Uh, but um, um, but there is a so I come back to your question after writing the next theorem. So the theorem by Rashid and Tarai and by Tarai. Uh, alone, which is uh, from an MTC, uh, we get uh, what can exist to construct such a symmetric model quantum. Mm, let's also call it ZC, which goes from borderisms where there is a where the category uh, C is the uh, set of labels for the, the line operators. Mm. Okay. Right, and now the question remains, what is a loop in this setting? And um, you cannot write it like this. So there's no like actual formulation for it. Um, there is, uh, um, so you would, yeah, so I can't really say anything very intelligible. So this, there's a, there's, there are left, you can have this, there are duals in this category and there are evaluation and co-evaluation maps in which you have, which happen here. And then the loop would be, uh, you combine these two and you get another. Um, I, I'm, so I think I can't explain it in one technical way. But um, um, but again, if I have this piece of algebraic data, uh, then I get a functor which can assign linear maps to, to such pictures, and they again be homotopy invariants. So in particular, you get link invariants and three manifolds, but you get something slightly better. You also get linear maps for manifolds as well. So, you can't see this. So, if you just evaluate this in the bare uh, category, right? Not the decorative category. Uh -huh. So this is a linear map yeah, from the input yeah. surface. To the it's always a linear map. This, it's even, also this gives a linear map, but the vector space has now changed. The vector space also depends on what functors you have. Right, exactly. But okay, but, uh, so these uh, functors don't correspond to selecting a particular state in my equation uh, state. Not in, in this formalism. In this formalism, if you put such a mark point, that would be an entirely different vector space. Um, I should also add that so, so this is hiding some technical details. One technical detail this is hiding is that these um, lines have to be framed as they would have to be in sort of science. So it's not that I'm sleeping under the rug. Also, the vector spaces now can be infinite dimension because you can push as many mark points on the surface yeah. as you want. But there's a number of mark points is finite. Finite, so you're only allowed to put a finite number of mark points. And and then 
for a given surface with a given collection of mark points, you get a finite dimension on all space. But the dimension is not bounded, so you can find up to a large dimension of uh, state spaces, but each individual one is finite. Um, so, line of those. Now I want to come to substitutes. Uh, so, um, in for line observables and from Simon theory, we have seen that it's a very good uh, classical action analogy, which is uh, they should be labeled by a representation of the gauge group. For surface observables, I, I don't know the uh, answer. So, I'm just gonna, if I hand you a compact gauge group, um, what would be a good way to describe it? Do, do you have something like optimals, um, which is surface observables? So, uh, I think I want to say, I just say a proof group is a surface because, uh, in terms of a regional A, not dual one, huh? or whatever is dual, but in any case, uh, in terms of a regional A, I think there are four dimensions that are quite a, quite a surface, uh, whether they depend on the surface or that on the boundary of the surface, I already don't remember. It's so, why we need the surface. So here in the general setting, I have not seen something like this. So, but I have done some work on the Julian Charles Simon study. Uh, so, but in the Julian Charles Simon study, there's no bias. Uh, and so, you know, from 2010, where they give an actual formulation. Oh, um, uh, so, so, so. So, so again, um, uh, we can just do our um, not very uh, helpful approach and give an axiomatic formulation. So we would say, okay, so we had already added lines. Why shouldn't our uh, borders now all not also contain uh, surfaces which can flow, which can be embedded into our three manifold and maybe end on the boundary? So. That makes our bordism category even more com com complicated. We should be able to decorate them by some label set. And uh, can we now find something which assigns homotopy invariance and linear maps to these uh, configurations? So other examples uh, of a theory which includes lines and uh, so Yeah, actually, Kapustin and Saulin are exactly both talking about this top groups. So they talk about top groups in the V and in terms of time. Uh, but I thought it, so in, in general, I haven't seen this done, so that's sort of an interesting question, which I don't know the answer. Um, so, so I want to um, give a method to construct examples of this. So that is sort of the uh, main um, outcome of the work with Kagmi um, and Schaumann. And um, the idea goes back to Luzes, goes back to Kapustin and Saulina, and to uh, work by um, uh, uh, Fuchs, Schweiger, and Valentino. And so, what is the idea? The idea is to um, allow, so this uh, surface here is a surface which has a boundary, but the boundary sits precisely on the boundary of the three manifolds. So that's where you can glue things together. What um, um, is suggested in their uh, papers is to allow slightly more general surfaces, which can also have boundaries inside the three manifold. So that's uh, so the idea in this uh, paper here. So you look at surface defects with um, boundary. So you have a surface, uh, but then maybe it has like a like a hole. Um, uh, and so I will have to label it close. And so you want to uh, 
allow also such uh, surfaces. Then you observe that you can then think about uh, surface defects which look like uh, like very thin ribbons. So that's the boundary. That's the boundary. Here's your surface defect. And and if you string this even more, uh, it should in the limit. And the limit is trivial because it's a TFT. It should in the limit become one of the line operators which are already uh, mm -hmm. in your circle. So so there should be some map from these surfaces which are allowed to have boundaries to line operators. Okay, that's uh, an observation. When I look at the lines uh, branch inside the box, and here I'm thinking about so so we'll get to the line that's branching out in a minute. Um, get to the line branching out. So, um, and, and then we need another ingredient to formulate the idea, which is, uh, so suppose I've got some surface defects somewhere in my scheme manifold, and, and I put uh, a little hole into it. Suppose uh, uh, after evaluating the TFT on it, that's equal to some one zero constant times the same configuration, but without the hole. So putting a hole changes the amplitude only by a constant. If that is true, then I have the following uh, the way to construct surface defects. I start with my uh, two-dimensional surface. Then I punch uh, lots of little holes into it. And um, I can do this without changing the amplitude by multiplying with the inverse of that constant a sufficient number of times. Then because it's topological, I make these holes bigger. So I, uh, I can homotope this to look like having very big holes and only very thin uh, areas of surface, right? So maybe uh, do I have a color? No, so this is my surface here. But here the surface is only, uh, the only surface which is left is these very thin strands. Um, so that's an assumption. So if we have this property. Um, and then later on, I will only be able to describe surface defects with this property, but we will see that there are such surface defects. And these are the only known ones, so, um, so somebody still has to come up with some better way, but uh, I think that one can be. So these boundaries are Um so, so you can, so I'm thinking of there's a, like some boundary condition which is always the same. You can also think about there being several possible boundary conditions one can make with several decorations. That is true, but I don't, I, I'm thinking of one canonical decoration which I put there for every such one. Mm -hmm. So, so we see that we can. So this here now looks a little bit like having line defects, which can have junctions. Um, and so maybe we can try and describe surface defects by pointing at a given line operator and certain junctions which we are these line operators can meet. Um, so let's follow this up a little bit. So, uh, so the idea is to describe surface defects by uh, labels for line operators and junctions. Um, but these line operators and junctions are not arbitrary. For example, if we take a, a picture of a surface with holes which looks like this, here's my, my surface, then depending on, on how I arrange uh, these areas, I put write it in terms of line operators and, junct and, and junctions uh, like this or like this. So, so the uh, line operators and junctions should satisfy some sort of associativity property. 
So, uh, so that is uh, so, so that is the idea uh, here, and we'll talk further this paper. And we will say that maybe a good way to describe surface defects is to look at some things which are right implementation marks to give the complete name. But um, uh, so this one is so delta acceptable symmetric linear algebra. Uh, C. And so the algebra bit refers to having coins having fixed a line operator, a label for a line operator together with a two to one junction, which, which satisfies this associativity condition. And then there are some more complicated conditions, which are not um, required, uh, uh, which give some more data. Um, but if you have this, then you can formulate the following theorem. Uh, and yes, how many people are smaller myself from the 17? Um, or C, a modular tensor category, uh, get a symmetric monoidal factor from uh, three dimensional bordisms where. I now allow surface and line defects. The surface defects are decorated by such separable symmetric Frobenius algebras, modular equivalent solution. Uh, the line defects, these are labels for uh, surface defects. Um, and then uh, here, just objects you see line defects. Uh, okay. Um, and, um, and in fact, you can be slightly more general. You can also look at situations where surface defects lead one dimensional junctions and so on that is also allowed. And uh, maybe the uh, final thing I will say is um, so this uh, label set for uh, surface defects, what does it actually look like concretely in the example of um, uh, SU2, where I use the affine Lie algebra at level K? To, to construct the algebraic data in one of the kinds of techniques. Uh, but maybe before I do this, so let me um, point out one uh, consequence of this. So, so one way in, in which this is pretty, or one can find this pretty, is that in particular this allows you to compute now invariants of three manifolds, which have embedded links, but also embedded modulated surfaces. So, so it's sort of a more general invariant of some three-dimensional geometric structure, which is good. So, for let's look at the example where C is. Um, Representations of the affine Lie algebra SU2 level K, um, which should uh, correspond to the SU2 transcendent serial level K. So, so I ask uh, what is the label set for surface defects depending on K? So, if K is, um, so we distinguish a number of cases, and those who um, look at uh, classifying. Modular invariant partition functions of conformal heat theory will recognize this list. Um, so we uh, distinguish uh, a number of cases. K can be odd or even, but even and different from the following um, three numbers. And in each of these cases, we get a, a slightly different behavior. So, um, so what will I do? I will give the the labels in these equivalence classes, which label distinct uh, simple surface defects. So, number of uh, simple in the sense of not being superpositions, uh, surface defects. Um, so, if K is what, you just get one. But this one, from some other person's point of view, may just as well be zero, 
because this refers to the one surface defect which you always have, which is the trivial defect, which is you're allowed to forget the embedded surface and then evaluate the effect. That's something which satisfies the axioms, and um, it is there, and it's the only one you have in the odd situation, so you might as well say, okay, well, there are no interesting surfaces. Then for even and a different uh, from these cases, uh, there are two. So the trivial one, the one you cannot forget, and one interesting one, which does something not trivial. And in these three situations, there are three. The trivial one and two interesting ones. And, um, uh, and so, so this uh, is usually called the ADE classification, which appears in a number of contents. This context, this would be the case A, you would, you would have cases A and B, and the C cases C, you would have A and D, and you would have uh, C. So it's a type of ADE classification which happens here. But you see that as opposed to the number of different line defects, you have the number of different surface defects doesn't grow as k, just say either zero or one, it doesn't explode as code. Um, okay. so, so there are some applications of this, uh, which I will um, not discuss, but I want to at least say. So one place where this matters is that one can use 3D TFT to understand or classify two-dimensional conformity theories, and that then directly linked to the various modular and variant cross partition functions, which is where this application first appears. And um, there is another relation where one can ask if my 3D TFT allows for uh, symmetry. So one can ask, does any of these defects implement some interest in the symmetry of the TFT? And if it does, can I only forward by that symmetry? That's another line of inquiry. Can pursue, um, but I want to end the talk maybe at this point and thank you for listening. Do you have a correspondence between this picture and quantizing John Simons in higher genus uh, Riemann surface and Stein? A line which is the time. Um, so, so it looks the same type of decomposition. So if I have so that should so if I quantize the theory on Riemann surfaces times the line, that should describe the state state of the terms Simon theory. Um, uh, but I don't understand if there is a relation where you in addition have these sort of defects that, that I don't I don't have a description. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that one. Just the comparison. Uh, what, what does delta center mean? Yeah, what does delta center mean? So um, it means so, uh, so. So actually, my little line observables are directed. So I have I need such a junction and and such a junction, and um, I want them to be normalized in such a way that if I draw this picture, uh, that's the same as uh, this picture. So um, you could have called so the terminology we use so that um, you could also call special, but special has another constant here which I want to have enough. So I call it. So it pushes this is a uh, product opposed to the product is the separable means the, the product has a right inverse, and delta separable means the um, the co-product is an instance of the right inverse of the product. Oh, okay. So, you know, so the fact that you get so again you find that the surface defects correspond to the previous algebra is essentially because of that property that a whole is just yeah. so that that's the and this is the entirety of known examples. Um if somebody finds a more general way of constructing surface defects, that would be very interesting and would be for example. But the ones which are classified here are the only the ones which have this problem. And maybe some not short, but if not, then that's like.